What's going on, wonderful people? It's Metacosis Perfectionatus. Welcome back to my mathematics playlist. In this video, I'll teach you how to find the slope of a straight line, whether it's a positive value, a negative value, or a zero value. The slope is rise over run. It's also the change on the vertical axis divided by the change of the horizontal axis. It also equals delta y over delta x or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It also equals tan theta. What is theta? Theta is the angle between the line and the horizontal, not the vertical, but here and the horizontal. This is theta, not this. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. This video is part of my physics playlist. Please watch these videos in order. This playlist has a video on every single topic required for physics for the MCAT or DAT exam. Next, some relations. If I write an equation like this, A equals B over C. It means that the relation between A and B is directly or directly proportional. If B goes up, A goes up. If B goes down, A goes down, provided that C remains constant. If I write it like this, it means that the relation between A and C is inverse. If C goes up, A goes down. If C goes down, A goes up, provided that B remains constant, of course. And if I write it like this, it means that the relation between B and C is direct. If B goes up, C goes up. And if B goes down, C goes down, provided that A remains constant. So the moral of the story is, anytime you have two entities multiplied by one another, remember cross multiplication, they are inversely correlated. But anytime you have two entities divisible by one another, because I can rearrange this equation into this, A divided by B equals 1 divided by C, which means that these two entities A and B are divisible by one another. If they are divisible by one another, they are directly correlated. Look at the last one, B over C. B over C are divisible. That's why they are directly correlated. If A and B are directly correlated, then we can draw a graph like this and we can put A right here and B over there and the relationship between them will be direct. So you'll have a line going up like this. Next, graphs and slopes. How to read graphs? Well, you first have to look at whatever is on the y-axis and whatever is on the x-axis. If you get these entities wrong, you will answer everything incorrectly. You have to know the relation. It's a relation between x and y. Okay, if the graph looks something beautiful like this going up, this is directly correlated, which means as x goes up, y goes up. But what if the graph is drawn in a different way? Here is y, here is x, but look at the line. It's not going up, but it started up and is going down. This started down and going up, but this started up and going down as time passes by. So this means that the relation between x and y is inverse. Look at this. Between A and B, we have direct correlation. As B goes up, A goes up, and vice versa. Which means the slope of this line is a positive number. But look at this. Oh, this is decreasing. Which means Y is inversely correlated with X. And the slope of the red line will be a negative number. If you're not convinced, just imagine any random numbers. Let's say that this is 5 and this is 10. Let's say that this is 2 and this is 4. And then you calculate the slope, which is rise over run. What's the rise? 5. The difference between this point and this point is 5. What is run? Oh, 4 minus 2 is 2. So it's 5 divided by 2. That's positive 2 and a half. That's a positive slope. But if I do the same thing here, let's say that this is 10 and this is 5. Let's make this 2 and this 4. If you want the rise or the change on the y-axis, remember that I started 10 and ended 5. So it's 5 minus 10. Oh, that's a negative in the numerator. But the denominator is positive 2. So the slope is a negative number, as you see. When I say rise, I mean the change on the y-axis, which means y2 minus y1. But on this side, it was y2 minus y1. The slope of any of these lines is rise over run. It's the change of the vertical axis divided by the change on the horizontal axis. It's the delta y, which means y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The slope of this line is also tan theta. What is theta? Theta is the angle that this line makes with the horizontal. So for B, 
theta is all of this angle right here between this and this. But for line A, the slope is tan of this theta. It's the angle that the line makes with the horizontal. Remember that tan 0 is 0 and tan 45 is 1. As your angle increases from 0 to 90, the tan of that angle also increases. So A has the smallest angle and therefore the smallest tan theta and therefore the smallest slope. B has a greater theta and therefore a greater tan theta and therefore a greater slope than A. As for C, it has the most humongous angle that you can imagine, which means its theta is huge and its tan theta is the biggest and its slope is the greatest. The greater your slope, the more steep you are. But the lower your slope, the less steep you are. This is very flat, but this is very steep because this is low slope, but this is high slope. If you wish to see more videos like this one in the future, drop me any math emoji in the comments. If you are a physics buff, I hope you remember that acceleration equaled what? The change in velocity over the change in time. It's velocity over time. That's why we're gonna put velocity on the y-axis and time on the horizontal or the x-axis. If my car is speeding up and up and up, I was traveling at 10 miles per hour and then 15 and then 20, 25, 30, 35, etc. I'm speeding up. This is positive acceleration and you'll find that the slope is positive because I'm going up. However, what if I'm driving at a constant velocity? For example, 35 miles per hour none changing. It's 35 now, it's 35 after a while, it's 35 even then. This is not accelerating, so the acceleration is zero. And the slope is zero. When the slope is zero, you get a flat horizontal line. Why is this? Because remember that the slope is the change on the y-axis over the change on the x-axis. It is rise over run. But when the y is not changing because it's kept constant at this, therefore there is no change in the y. The delta is zero because let's say that this point represents five meters per second. This point is five, 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 five. So five minus five is zero. So you get a zero change on the y-axis and the time is changing. So that would be a positive number. Let's make it 10, for example. 0 divided by anything equals 0 and that's why the slope here is 0 when the acceleration is 0 and the velocity is uniform or constant. So just because my acceleration is 0 does not mean that I am stopping. I am not static. I am moving at 35 miles per hour, but it's not changing. There is no acceleration and there is no deceleration either. But what if there is deceleration? I started at 100 miles per hour and then 90 and then 80 and then 70, 60, 50, etc. This is deceleration and the slope will be negative. See the difference between positive and negative. I start low and then go high versus start high and then descend into Hades. Quiz time. Here I have two questions for you. Here's the first one and here's the second one. Please pause, try to solve them yourself and let me know your answers in the comments. If you want more math tricks, check out my physics playlist and check out my mathematics playlist as well. You can download all of my physics PDF notes with more than 250 problems with their answers at medicosisperfectionalis.com. I help you learn, understand and pass exams. I have notes for biochemistry, organic chemistry and general chemistry as well plus biology, physiology, anatomy. We got all kinds of notes on my website. You can download my notes on my website. I have notes for physics, biology, general chemistry, biochemistry, organic chemistry, anatomy, physiology. We got all kinds of notes at medicosisperfectionalis.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. And don't forget to check out my other playlists as well. If you found these videos to be helpful, please consider supporting my channel by buying me a coffee. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. To learn about all of the drama that takes place in your kidney in the proximal tubule, loop of Henle, distal tubule, etc., download my kidney physiology course on my website. It comes with videos, notes, and cases. There are more than 600 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. 
Please subscribe, hit the bell, click the join button, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo, go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine, chemistry, math, and physics make perfect sense.